Oh, there it is. We are like, yo, when I tell you we just talked for 15 minutes, did the intro, the whole not, man, she whiz. I'll tell you what, Kyle. All right, it's Wednesday night, spitting with Spitter. I'm TJ Spitter. Before we start the show, I want to shout out to my sponsors, Lehigh Vape. They're located at 822 Nazareth Pike. Go there for all your vaping essential needs. Wall-to-wall pest control services. If you go to the Facebook search box and type in wall-to-wall, it'll take you to Chuck Rockmore. Contact him for all your pest control service needs. Now to my guest. My goodness, I feel like, yo, we just had a great conversation. Yeah, good Yeah, good 10, 15 minutes. Let, let, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, Again, we're going to start at the beginning. I met you in 2009-ish. Yeah. So when I have people on my show, my life is based around recovery. And, <coughs> excuse me, and people that fight that good fight. And you're one of those people. And that's why I asked you to come on my show so you could share your story. But before we start, let's tell them how we met. Yeah, we met, uh, um, uh, Jackie was working at Applebee's and so was my best friend. Uh, he ended up having, um, a party at his house and, uh, you guys came and, um, got egged on. Well, I got egged on to, to do a rap battle with you. You were much better than me. So not to cut you off, that, that's my question. Who was mm-hmm. egging you on? Um, you know, I think it was one of those things where um, it well, a lot of it is just like my friends that had told me before when I freestyled that I was good. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if it was one of those things where if I was actually good or if it was, you, were you know, yeah, sometimes when you, uh, you know, uh, your friends will tell you you're good just to, you know, be nice and things like that. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, they're egging me on to do it, and I kind of wanted to do it, too. And I was like, you know what? I was like, because I, like, um, you know, I was told how good you were and shit, you know? And I thought uh, um, I thought that, you know, uh, now is my time. i got to prove myself somehow. And then you went first, and I was in way over my head. I quickly realized how oh, in over my head I was. So, Do you know a Ryan Osmosis? Yeah, that's my friend Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, to the rap battle. <laughs> yeah. Be clear, kids. I don't need a battery put in my back, and I rap for real. Yeah. yeah. I was in so, one of your videos. Yes, you were. Yeah. Yes, you were, my <laughs> guy. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning mm-hmm. of how your addiction started. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And we'll, we'll walk through that. Um, yeah, uh, I think it started when I was about, I think I was 13 or 14. I had surgery on my wrist to remove. It was a cyst, uh, that rhymes, I'm not trying to one up you here on the rhymes, but we're not doing this. <laughs> yeah. But I had surgery on my wrist and, uh, I got some, uh, oxycodone and, right. um, I realized, you know, if I took two instead of the one that it said on the bottle, I felt really good. And I remember that whole week I, um, always i every night i took two instead of one and ever since then any pills i could get my hands on i would do it wasn't until i would say that i was probably like 17 and had uh, a job and a source of income that i would go out and actually buy shit like that you know Uh, i was doing pills before i even tried weed i think i tried weed when i was 16 for the first time so i was doing opiates before anything like that um and that led to you know, me doing a lot of pills, I think, in when I was like 19 or so. And I was probably 19 or 20 when I first tried heroin because it was so much cheaper. I was spending like $60 every time to get high. And I realized I could get high for $5 if I bought heroin instead, um, which um, it always seemed it seemed like a good financial decision. Uh, and it was it was it was for a little bit, but then it quickly spiraled out of control because uh, needing $5 quickly becomes needing $10 and needing $20. And I think the last time before I finally got clean, uh, six years ago, I was doing a hundred dollars a day. Um, so it quickly spirals out of control, but, um, um, there was points where I got clean for a little bit. 
um, in about 2010. And um, uh, my parents ended up getting divorced to kind of threw me into a spiral from them kind of talking shit on each other, you know, because um, I was an adult, you know, and they kind of treated me like when they would talk to me about this stuff, kind of like an adult, but they would also say bad things about each other. And um, I couldn't deal with that or everything that was going on around me. I relapsed, and I think that's actually when I started uh, injecting it as well. I had only, like, snorted it up to that point, uh, heroin, and uh, started injecting it, which led to me, I think, in February 2012. Um, uh, my uh, mom had moved out at that point. Um, my dad was on vacation um, somewhere doing something. I had the house to myself, so, of course, what I did was, you know, throw a throw house party. I remember, oh, that was uh, up until the point where I nearly died. It was a great day. <laughs> um, I had gotten my tax return check. I went out, I got a new cell phone. Uh, I got a whole bunch of food and alcohol for the party. I got a bundle of heroin, you know, and uh, through this big house party, everybody had a great time. I had a great time uh, right before I went to go to bed. I was like, you know what? I should like shoot up a little bit before I go to bed, you know, and I did. And, um, I remember waking up the next morning and I couldn't uh, breathe, really. I couldn't breathe and I went into the bathroom and uh, uh, I started coughing up blood into the sink of the bathroom. And at that point, I realized that like something wasn't right. And I was like, I need to call 911. Um, but me being the person I am, I'm like, I need to get dressed before I call 911. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to get dragged out of the house, you know, in my boxers or whatever. So I sat there for like, it seemed like forever, but it's probably about half an hour of like going in and out of consciousness, trying to get dressed before I was able to get downstairs and call 911. And then I was in a, a medically induced coma for a week um, because I had uh, aspirated into my lungs um and one of them was completely collapsed the other one was about 20 percent, i think they said um at one point they had like called in all my family to say their goodbyes because i wasn't really supposed to make it um and then after that i woke up about a week later to having a breathing tube being ripped out of my throat it it was like one of the most uncomfortable things um Aside from like having a catheter pulled up, but that's too much information. That was way worse. But uh, um, but then after that, I ended up getting into like an outpatient recovery uh, uh, place. I was in there for I did that for about three months. I want to say at the outpatient program at Hunter Medical Center, um, and um, uh, I was clean for about three years. Um, and then I ended up getting into a relationship with someone that uh, I didn't know was doing opiates at the time. And uh, I had started, uh, I was completely sober for, I want to say, two of those three years. And then I started, like, drinking and smoking weed again and stuff, which I don't blame that on, you know, me relapsing. I more blame the lack of upkeep on my mental health uh, more than anything because um, they kind of go hand in hand. And uh, I ended up um, getting offered some um, pills and uh, ended up relapsing after three years. And then for the next year or so, um, everything just fell apart. Uh, I ended up being, uh, homeless, uh, crashing on people's couches. Um, uh, and it got to a point where I was doing things I'm not proud of, uh, things that I'm ashamed of, a lot of stealing and things like that. Um, the point that it got to the, where I couldn't do it anymore is I ended up stealing, um, a couple hundred dollars from the person that was letting me stay with them while they were on vacation. And, uh, yeah, and I couldn't do it anymore. And, uh, I think I talked to my mom about it because no one, she didn't have any idea I was using again, but, uh, I was like, I don't know what to do. And she, uh, ended up calling some, she called the methadone clinic in, in uh, in Phillipsburg and, uh, told me when I could go get in and, uh, got into that. And, uh, over the next year of being in the program, a year, year and a half, I tapered off of that and got completely off. And uh, six years, well, it'll be six years in a couple weeks here, but six years later, here I am. Yeah. I'm I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Only, only because, you know, I know firsthand how hard it is. Mm -hmm. And I commend you for fighting the good fight. So... 
when you say the mental health and addiction go both mm -hmm. go hand in hand like can i ask you what do you suffer from and when it comes to your mental health um i have um like chronic depression um okay. and i also have um a condition called borderline personality disorder um now there's a bit of a nasty stigma surrounding it um i will say um i i um i don't really fit the criteria anymore um although a lot of my mental processes work the same and it took years and years and years of therapy to even uh get to a point where it's manageable and i can right. you know turn that stuff off but you know addiction was an escape that's what it was, it was uh, part of it was self-destructive feeling like i needed to like uh, i knew i was hurting myself doing that stuff but part of me felt like i needed to um put myself through that um like i deserved to feel that pain because i thought i was a bad person i didn't i hated myself um i was uh it's it's tough you know? and again you know i i hate to use the cliche that i've been there and i can relate but i have mm. and yeah. i'm so proud of where you're at today thank you because you. i know how it's it's not easy you know yeah um i mean i i uh I like some of the praise, you know, I like uh, being like, I'm proud of myself for doing it. But at the same time, I don't always feel like I deserve it. Right. Um, I would feel like I would deserve more praise if I never did everyone in the first place, you know. Um, so like, I'm not, um, I'm not proud of my clean time, but I am thankful for it. Yeah, you know, um, I'm same way i'm very grateful for my clean time but i don't feel i deserve to be patted on the back for something that i should be doing yeah because yeah, like what about yeah. all the people that never never get into drugs or yeah. you know they you know um it's a vice just like any other so um but i'm and my life is a million times better um so, being clean you, so what do you do with yourself to stay out of that that head that addictive headspace if you would um well a lot of it for me is um intrusive thoughts because mm -hmm. you know how um whether it's um that piece of pie that's sitting in the fridge or whether it's a drug uh you'll be sitting doing something and your brain's going like go get that go get you want that go get that you'll feel better if you get it just go get it and like your brain's saying that over and over and there's uh, for me, it's recognizing those patterns um, and catching it before there's an action to it. You know, not um, I'm not the kind of person that would like act on it immediately. But if I think about it over and over and over again, it can drive you to the point where you're like, OK, I'm just going to go do it. Um, right. Or a uh, big thing that I would always do is bargain with myself. Um, you know, it's just like. Well, uh, 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 I'm doing heroin again today, even though I said I wouldn't, but at least I'm going to work, you know, um, or I'm doing this, but at least it's not that or just little bargains. And for me, a lot of it is taking a second, um, taking a step back and really analyzing those thoughts and thinking about them from not just in the moment, currently feeling them as they come, um, because I feel like. Uh, if you take things slower, don't get overwhelmed by those feelings. Don't let them overwhelm you. Uh, you can have control of your mental health or control of addiction urges and things like that. But it takes time and uh, a lot of discipline, I guess. And it's not easy. It does. Like, I still I still struggle to this day with some yeah. of my intrusive thoughts. Because oh, yeah. the way my thoughts work is it's so reality. Mm -hmm. These terrible thoughts are so reality, and it's like yeah. I can't, I can't stop it, and I can't shut it off, you know. Yeah. So like, yeah. and they're, I feel like they're not always the truth, you know. Right. No. Like someone doesn't message not. you back in like a couple hours. You're just like, oh my god, they hate me. They don't want to talk to me again. This is the word. And then like I have to be like, no, they're they're working. They're busy. What? Why are you being crazy right now? Not crazy, but why are you overreacting or feeling like this about this right now? You know. Right. I'm the same exact. It's, I don't want to say it's a breath of fresh air to to know somebody exactly like me, but like it kind of mm. is. Yeah, you know. I feel like a lot of people have those thoughts. It's just they they might not always realize them. 
uh, you know? Matthew, Matthew Jones commented, you know, good for you guys to have courage to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate that, Matt. Yeah. Um, Alan, I good evening, gentlemen. Appreciate you both for the conversation. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I would rather talk about it and rather be open and transparent about everything, you know, because um, for a lot of my life, I haven't been about things. You know, I've hidden my addictions. I've, you know, done things like that. So it's like I'm at a point where I would rather be uh, my dad always said, um, be a man of honor and integrity. And yeah, absolutely, I try to do that in every aspect of my life because for so long I wasn't, you know lying and stealing and doing a lot of things I really regret and hurting a lot of people I loved um, because of addiction. And uh, if it's a, it's a cycle, you know, where like you use and then you use because you feel like shit, but then you feel like shit because you use. So you continue to, you know, it's a, it's a cycle. That's um, the, that insanity cycle is crazy. Yeah. And it got to a certain point where I was like, like I said, I stole from someone I care about a lot, uh, a couple hundred dollars or more. Um, and uh, I remember feeling so terrible about it. Like of all, like if I'm stealing from a retail store to get my fix or whatever, I had some moral hangups about that and it was really shitty, but I could sleep at night, you know, but after stealing from someone who loved me, who support me, who was letting me sleep on their couch while I was homeless, someone who is giving me all these things and uh, unconditional love. How could I, how could I do that to them? You know? And that's what really got me, you know? So Chuck, Chuck just kind of, and shout outs to Chuck, Unc, much love to you. He says, I could be wrong, but sometimes you have to watch the overthinking. It can send you somewhere else too. I'm, I'm very mindful of my fault patterns because mm -hmm. once I start fixating on something, especially when it's not healthy for me mentally, physically, yeah. emotionally, spiritually, I know what place that'll take me to. Yeah. And you know, I, and I today, and this isn't a, a braggadocious, oh, I have 12 years clean. It's a 12 years. I don't think I'm going to necessarily pick up a drug, but what I'll do is, I'll isolate myself. I'll overeat. I won't go to the gym. I'll make every excuse to have this little pity party in my head, which yeah. isn't reality. Yeah. And you it know? can be tough, too, because when you're in that state of mind, uh, and like you said, even when it's not using, when you're doing things like that, like, I'll be completely honest with you. This side of my desk that you can't see is a mess. Uh, right. The past three weeks have been incredibly rough. Uh, I've, you know put off certain responsibilities and I know that like if I don't get it done this week it can uh, snowball and turn into a bigger problem that seems a lot bigger uh, and insurmountable than something small every single day you know um, I do it all the time yeah and um, uh, I think it's easy to get caught up in, in, in that and um, like I said um, earlier like just taking a step back I think is the biggest thing like removing yourself from that moment because you can get overwhelmed and uh, like Chuck said, overthinking and you can get so overwhelmed by those thoughts and feelings that you don't take a deep breath, take a step back and really uh, think about the, um, you know, what's actually going on because you're so overwhelmed. Before I got clean, I didn't really have these tools that I have now. And I would overthink myself into panic attacks. Mm -hmm. To like, I'm not, like, I can't even leave my car. I'm rocking back and forth. Jackie's on the phone with me trying to talk me off the ledge. And, and it's some imaginary problem that hasn't even surfaced. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not a reality. Yeah, uh, like I like to call them intrusive thoughts, and that's what they are. Uh, a lot of the times they're not based in reality, you know. Um, and um, uh, therapy has been the biggest tool for me and learning right. how my mind works and learning why I think certain ways, you know, and um, being able to see. Uh, I know it's there's a stick, there's a, a weird thing about the word now, but being able to see triggers and things like that, yeah. um, you know, or being able to catch patterns. 
Um, and paying attention to your brain, I think, is the biggest thing. And learning tools to help cope with that. I'm I'm really hyper aware of what affects my peace. Yep. So if if you affect my peace on that level, I just unfortunately I can't be around you. Yeah, you have to. It can seem selfish sometimes um, yep. to. Um, to be like, I have to cut this person out of my life, or I have to uh, do this thing um, that I, you know, uh, I know will probably not affect other people as well. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. Um, if it's going to jeopardize your mental health or your sobriety or anything like that, um, whether it's cutting out a toxic person or getting a new job, um, whatever it is, I think it's. Um, your mental health should be most people's number one priority. I'm very, I subscribe to self care too. Mm -hmm. Whether it's just you taking a day once a week, I'll take a day for myself where I don't do anything. Like normally yeah. I go, 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 go until I just burn out. Yeah. But I'll take a day for myself. So it's October, right? So I dive mm -hmm. into Halloween movies yeah. and spooky horror season. movies. All yeah, spooky season is upon us. <laughs> my favorite time of the year. Yeah. And I dive into once a week, I'll just sit in front of the TV, watch old B-rated B horror movies <laughs> and enjoy my the company of my own piece because I used to yeah. not be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I know for sure. Until uh, I moved to the apartment that I'm currently in a few years ago, um, mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't be alone at, like, at all. Like I, uh, I learned that's a, honestly probably one of the healthiest things I learned how to do is how to be alone with my own thoughts, how to uh, manage that. Because before that, it was uh, I had to be hanging out with somebody. I had to be doing this. I had to be doing that. Like, um, but there's a lot of things I had to start cutting out of my life when I uh, really got clean. Like I couldn't really go out anymore to to um, like bars or clubs, even if I wasn't drinking or anything. You know. Um, being around that atmosphere is too tempting, you know. Um, we have a, a question coming in from Joe. Shout out to my brother Joe. Do you all do you all do me uh, therapy and meds since getting clean? You can answer that first. Um, I was on meds when I was younger. Um, mm -hmm. I think from age of like seventeen to twenty or so, I was on antidepressants, and um, I've been in multiple outpatient therapy programs. Um, uh, done a lot of different meetings, been to a lot of different therapists, psychologists, things like that over the years. Um, uh, I haven't recently, I'd say in the past three years or so, I haven't really been to um, any therapy um, sessions or meetings or anything like that. Um, although it is something I have been looking into getting back into because um, struggling with like uh, grief and stuff with losing my mom recently, you know, um, I've looked into that sort of thing. Um, which I think there's um, a time when you have to, I don't think it's less manly or less strong to admit you need help. Um, no, it's not. You know, if, you, if your mental health, you can be good for years and then something can happen. And if you feel yourself faltering or feel yourself um, not being able to have as much control as you used to of your emotions and mental health, going to signing back up for therapy as tough as it is, I think is a brave thing to do. And, um, I've been thinking about getting into something like that, you know, um, not that I feel like I necessarily like, like need it right now, but I feel like it'd be good for me. You know, it's always good to have a safety net. Yeah. And a good to have someone to just talk to without judging you. Um, right. someone that can, uh, challenge your own thoughts, someone that can um, maybe point out things that you don't see, connect dots that you don't connect, you know, like if you're like, oh, well, I feel like uh, using or I feel depressed every time uh, this one thing happens or every time you're in a certain environment, you might not realize that and a therapist can help you work through it. They can give you a lot of tools. And I think that is those are the greatest tools to have. Absolutely. I, uh, before I got clean, I was seeing the therapist and they had me on meds. And if I'm being honest, I abused the meds before I got clean. Not And not even that they were necessarily getting me high or anything like that, but like I didn't have a shutoff valve. Mm -hmm. And so now today 
I don't, I, me personally, this is just me personally. I don't take any meds for the fear of that I may abuse them, yeah. but I have a great support network of, in my support network, I have two doctors, two therapists, you know, that I call my brothers that I talk to all the time. I have a sponsor that I talk to all the time, you know, and, but like I said, that's just for me, but I implore anybody that, that thinks that they should see a therapist is go do so. Yeah. It can't hurt. There's no, there's no shame in it. There's no, like it's 2021. Come on. Right, like for sure. your mental health is important. This isn't the fifties. You're not less of a person. You're not yeah. weak. You're none of those things. And a lot of people still feel that way. You know, um, uh, for me, a, a controversial opinion I have is, uh, for me, um, uh, methadone helped me get clean. Right. Um, now, there's a bit of a stigma around it um, where people think that you're just trading one addiction for another. And there are definitely, from my time when I was like, you know, had to go to the clinic every morning to get my dose or whatever. Like, there's people that abuse it. There's people that are on like sure. triple the amount I was, you know. Um, but I think if you use it as a, a tool, you know, um, and use it, see it as a means to an end, you have to go into it knowing it's a means to an end that I'm going to start this. Um, once I get stable, I'm going to get off of it. Um, and, uh, for me, the experience of getting on it, um, it was a little rough at first. Um, especially like, uh, feeling restless, um, at home. Cause you know, you don't feel high or anything like that. Um, yeah. And, um, and then I tapered off of it and it was honestly painless. Uh, um, some people talk about how horrible the withdrawals are from it and stuff like that. When you go, I was going down like a milligram a week, like super slow. And I felt it was the easiest transition. Um, and not that I would ever want to do it again, but if I had to do it again, that's the way I would do it, you know? Yeah. And, and I get asked that a lot too, because like of my position that I'm in, in, the recovery world that I live in. And I always say that, like, whatever you use to help you get clean, I understand. Yeah. Everything isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. But if it's successful for you, do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Some people can't, some people, like, you know, can't be on a methadone program because they're just going to abuse it, you know, right. um, things like that. So everyone's different. You have to find out what works for you. There's no, some people uh, in the recovery community that I've met are set in, this is the, this is the guideline. You have to follow this step by step. This is the only way it works. And if you think about like, you know, pair of pants, you can't just give every single person the same pair of pants and expect them to fit, you know, like, no, be like, here, I, you give me a pair of 32s, it's not I'm working. fucking your skinny jeans up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, everyone's just like, a, just like clothing fits different on everyone. Treatment and recovery are different for everyone, you know? Absolutely. And I think as long as you're healthy and safe, that's what I think is most important. Now, Joe asked sleeping patterns. Do you all have trouble sleeping? Do you all have trouble to the extent to need to where you need sleep meds? Um, in the beginning, maybe, yeah. Um, definitely a lot of restlessness. Now, not so much. No. Um, I feel like uh, doing a physical job and working every day, I definitely... Uh, I mean, it helps that I'm overweight and, you know, get tired quick. But, uh, uh, but like, uh, uh, you know, um, <laughs> in the beginning, they can be helpful if they're not abused, I think, you know. I, uh, I've never been... A great sleeper. I sleep for like four hours at a clip. I'll wake up. I'll fall back to sleep for an hour or two. It's, you know, um, I do take melatonin. It's a vitamin, mm -hmm. you know, and that doesn't even help most of the time. So I yeah. hope that answered your question, Joe. Yeah. Um, I feel like with um, medicines that could potentially be abused, even though melatonin really can't, like some other sleep medications, I always... Um, unfortunately I don't have the luxury anymore, but like having them in the hands of a safe person, like someone that they can, you know, give you one when you go to sleep is always a good thing, but it can be tough with like over the counter stuff like that. Um, but, um, I, know, I try not to rely on medications if I don't have to, like I take the yeah. occasional leave for my back and that's about it. Yeah. If ibuprofen, I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. I need, like if I, if I have any inkling that I'll abuse it, I stay away from it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you know? I agree. I haven't. That's, that's um, just me. It's not. Again, I it's worry. Not I do worry though that in the future, like, what if I get hurt or like have to have a surgery? Like, it's going to be <laughs> tough to. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't trust myself if the doctors so, are like here. Like, I had. I was clean for like six or seven years. I forget the exact amount of time, and I had to have knee surgery. Mm-hmm. And um, it was the most excruciating thing I've ever dealt with. And I only got prescribed strong ibuprofen. Yeah. And even them, Jackie held for me and gave to me as needed. Because even if there's no narcotic in it, if I think it's going to take the pain away, yeah. and it's going to make me feel good, yeah. I'll take all of them. You yeah, know? I worry about that sort of thing if when that day comes. But, um, you know, um, I've been through some of the worst emotional pain with some physical pain, you know. Right, exactly. Like, uh, so that's the way I see it. I'll climb that mountain when I get there at this point because there's no use fretting over it now. My brother, much love to you. Thank you for coming mm-hmm. on here and being so of honest course. and open. Yeah, anytime. You have a show as well. I do. Yeah, it's a comedy show. It's a lot That's funnier good. than it's a lot funnier than this because I don't have to be so serious and you know. <laughs> um uh but uh yeah on Twitch TV forward slash Kyle Cop, which is my name that's uh down there. Right and there. Uh, every uh, Friday night, uh, about 9 p.m. Eastern time, we go live. Show starts anywhere from 9 to 9.30, depending on the day. But uh, it's pretty funny. So do different I'm, I'm segments and bits, and I dress up with different characters. Subscribe and tune in. I cannot wait. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of back catalog on there to watch. Um, all different segments and videos and things like that. There's different clips of funny parts. You don't have to watch the whole three-hour show. There's little clips there if you just want to see the funniest bits. So, That's fire. Yeah. Now, before, before you go, is there anything you want to ask me? Because, like, whenever I have guests on, it seems like I'm always asking the questions. And I don't want to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is there anything um, you want to ask me before you go? Uh, what for you was the the rock bottom that you got clean? That like what was the the thing that you're like, okay, I need to get fucking clean. You know, I had throughout my entire life, I always had like when I realized I was a drug addict, I always had reservations. Anything happens to my mom, whatever, my sister, my brother, whatever. I'm going to go use drugs. So it was August. Uh, We decided to, me and Jackie decided to go to a concert. It was for her birthday. I couldn't find my drug of choice before we left. So I stopped at a drugstore and got a bottle of sleeping pills. This is why I don't do the sleeping pills. Yeah. Um, and ended up drinking on them sleeping pills. And Jackie, who is now my wife, said that, you know, I don't know how I got home. And I drove. I don't remember how I got home. I don't remember getting into the bed. I remember... The next day, her saying, I can't do this anymore, and I can't watch you almost die in your sleep, you know, and have 9-1 dialed already and just watching you breathe. Yeah. And um, there was a bunch of moments that up to that point, like, for a long time, like, I called it, like, self-medicating, like, because there was a point where I wasn't even really getting high anymore. Yeah. And I I was just getting high. To not be sick. Hey, but just that maintaining. Was just maintaining. And and that was it, man. Like the pain that I caused her. Yeah. You know? Mm. And I've caused I've caused a whole wreckage shitstorm of pain through everybody that's ever been in my life. I'm sure I've hurt you one way or another. And I hope that in the last twelve years that I've made amends and, and have done some justice to those terrible things that I've done, but like the hurt that I caused her. Yeah. And she's like, you know, they, you always go through life and people say there's that one, that one love of your life, you know, and 
for me, that's her. Yeah. And, and uh, um, I know, I know what you mean. Cause like I said, that's for me, it was causing pain to my, my best friend, Cyrus, you know, who was letting me stay with him. The fact that I hurt him like that, that's what got right. me. So, and I, it was August 22nd, 2009. And I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And back then, beds weren't as accessible. Detoxes weren't as accessible. I locked myself in my bedroom. And I told Jackie and my mother, who was still alive at the time, like, listen, I'm going to be an asshole probably for the next seven to ten business days. <laughs> yeah. And um, I withdrew and I kicked in my house. Oh. It, which was, a listen, a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Yeah. I keep that right in the forefront of all my thoughts of how bad that was. Yeah. I, I'd only done that once, but I did it with the help of uh, a modium. Because uh, if you didn't know, modium uh, um, uh, satisfies the opiate receptors. Not to the same length, but you could pop like 15 a modium and you don't feel as bad. You still feel terrible. But right. even then, was I couldn't imagine doing it cold, cold turkey. It was, it was horrifying. And I yeah. don't wish that on anybody. I do not suggest to anybody that there's so many different ways and methods out there today. Yeah, I, do, I don't suggest that on anybody. So much amazing help and stuff like that too, especially now where it's such a widespread problem, um, and it's not you're not treated like a junkie anymore. You right. know, at a lot of these places, you're just treated like a person with a mental illness, which I think that's how it should be. You know, yeah. addic addiction being a mental illness, because um, you know, uh, back in the day, say like back when you got clean, like a lot of those places were seen as like you know that's where the, the bad people go scum of the earth to like go get help or treatment or anything like that. Um, but thankfully by the time I went six years ago, it was a little, a little better, but now it's even better than that. There's, there's so many, like back then there were in all of Warren County, Hunter and County, there were like two places. Yep. And now they're all over. Yeah. And that's just, that's just a testament to how we're fighting this fight, you know? Yep. That makes me happy how much is available to the addict that still suffers. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Is there anything else, my brother? Uh, No, just th thanks for having me and giving me a platform to share my story. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on, man, to the utmost... I'm going to bring you on again down the road once I get this Twitch thing figured out. Yeah, let me know. If you need help, hit me up. You know, um, I, again, I want to thank Kyle Cop for coming on and sharing his story. I appreciate you, my brother. This has been another episode of Spitting with Spitter. You can catch the replay. You can go to 2M1L Media, click like, subscribe, share. If you know somebody that's struggling, reach out to me or Kyle or myself to see if we can facilitate some help. More than happy to help. So, Kyle, I appreciate you, my guy. Thanks again for coming on. I hope you all have a thank great you. night out there. We're out of here.